a few weeks ago I, I started a little series called the spiritual warfare where I talked about uh, the serpent the fiery serpent the main idea was the complaining does to the devil what worship is to God then after that I shared a little bit about the spiritual strategies for spiritual warfare how Satan uses evil days to make us into evil people a uh, few weeks uh, before I left I shared also about the spiritual missile where we mentioned that prayer is a weapon and our mind is the battle and I think I mentioned at that time that that was my last message in the series and uh, I gently lied <laughs> well I didn't lie but I just I have a something that I want to share today and I believe that God is going to minister today to us in Jesus name I will give credit first of all to um, late Derek Prince for the contents not just of this message but the impact he has made upon the Christianity and our church in the terms of deliverance and I'm saying that because I received a few remarks where some people say that um, I copied a phrase from Derek Prince and I said it's not a phrase it's his whole teachings <laughs> concerning deliverance and they said why don't you give him credit I said if I would give him credit after each statement I would be mentioning his name more than Jesus so so I said I stopped giving him credit long time ago so but I'll just mention it once I do encourage every person to read his books on spiritual warfare and listen to the message called witchcraft which actually I'm going to share today in portion I want to sp speak today about shades of witchcraft now I understand you came here on the Pentecost day you're like <laughs> I'm not really excited here about witchcraft and uh, and you may think witchcraft is something that is so far away from your zip code and somewhere in Africa or India but I'm gonna bring it down home it's a lot more near to us than we imagine or we think first of all the definition of witchcraft and again Derek Prince mentioned this it's the attempt to control the person and make them do what you want by the use of any other spirit than the Holy Spirit it's a uh, controlling people that's what it is in witchcraft world you know a woman is is called a witch and a male is called a wizard of people who control uh, other people um, in the bible there is so much that is said about witchcraft first of all we know it's forbidden and it's denounced it was practiced by egyptians it was practiced by magicians by balaam by jezebel by ninevites by babylonians by simon the sorcerer by a bar Jesus the one that Paul made blind because he was distracting others from the name of Jesus Christ it was practiced by a girl at Philippi who was filled with spirit of divination it was practiced by uh, by false prophets it, we know that this witchcraft in the Bible was also and there's a scripture where it's mentioned that it was practiced by people taking body parts or the parts of animals and chanting over it to create kind of spells over people they would take bones they would take uh, rods they would take certain objects by which they would exercise these demonic enchantment and witchcraft we know that the biggest one that happened was uh, the king Saul when he went to a witch to see a witch and after that he died and it's interesting that after his death it says he died because he consulted a witch he did a lot of nasty things in his life but it's not why he died he died after he consulted a witch we know when apostle paul brought, brought revival to if to city of ephesus he asked people to burn witchcraft books books that have to do with witchcraft with magic and we know also that in the last days there will be a huge witchcraft and sorcery in the world that the antichrist will use to help him bring people under his subjection people are not going to blindly just worship a man unless he will use some kind of a power to entice them and he will use that power in the last days and so it's it's the power that is at work today and what Derek Prince said which was powerful he said that witchcraft is the religion of the fallen humanity if you have your bible let's go to, with me to Galatians chapter 5 and verse 19 now the works of the flesh are evident which are idolatry fornication uncleanness lewdness verse 20 idolatry and I want you to underline this sorcery some translation says divination and others say witchcraft works of the flesh are and we see the works of the flesh it mentions the the drinking it mentions the hatred it mentions the idolatry idolatry fornication and it's interesting that one of the works of the flesh is witchcraft and so the three shades of witchcraft number one is work witchcraft as a work of the flesh 
meaning it's not something demonic it's something fleshly where witchcraft in the core of sorcery or witchcraft is being able to control another person and witchcraft as fleshly or as work of the flesh manifests itself in three different ways one is manipulation intimidation and domination and these three are works of the flesh and they are evident everywhere in the life today in every sphere of the world whether it's in politics sometimes even in church sometimes in the household especially manipulation women know how to do this really good kids are experts at manipulation when a kid is very young it manipulates the parents they know it comes with the mother's milk why because witchcraft is the religion of the fallen humanity it's the work of the flesh where we manipulate other people sometimes women do it with their tears sometimes children they do it with crying also uncontrollably just to be able to twist the arm of the parent twist the arm of the husband to do whatever they want husbands are really good at intimidation many times that's done in the government many times that's done in the company it could be even done in the church where one particular person who is very controlling and that controlling it's not a personality it's the work of the flesh and behind that is demonic forces that are at work no marriage can succeed if witchcraft is in the center no church will succeed if pastors control their people or if there is someone who has a gift from God and uses that gift as a way to get their agenda pushed through the pastor and control the pastor that's witchcraft no business will succeed if the employees or the employer will look to control another person because that is not a blessing and that is not a gift or a skill it doesn't give you a right because you have more degrees than a speedometer to control another person it's just simply demonic and that is the work of the flesh amen many people that use that in relationships and they use that in church where they will look whatever they can to control another person and we have to understand as Christians today that that is not from God amen God called us to honor other people's will honor other people's choice even if that hurts us or hurts them imagine how respectful God is to our choice lovingly he allows us even to go to hell but he will not violate our free choice anything that violates your free choice anything that subdues that controls that is from the devil it is not from the holy spirit amen and that is one side of this spiritual thing called witchcraft number two the shade of witchcraft which is a spiritual force this is demonic it's people who uh, practice who are witch doctors sorcerers people who cause spells people who send um, dark forces and who want to control other people's lives through the act of sorcery and through the act of the dark spirits and through the act of all of these ungodly things and these things exist everywhere we were in seattle just a week and a half ago and right in the center of bef right before the space needle on the corner a little place where you can come and you can have your future being read you can come and you can cast, uh, cast spells and today and that's very popular in our movies most selling movies in America today almost every weekend some kind of a movie comes out that really hits high has to do with witchcraft and magic and I know that those are movies but what it does is it causes our culture to be okay with the terminology and ideology of casting spells and witchcraft and then when people hear speaking in tongues they have a heart attack somebody falls on the floor and their blood pressure rises demon speaks to somebody ah oh, that's from the devil really and you can watch six harry potter movies in a row and that's normal the devil is a liar and that is the work of the devil so the enemy wants to desensitize our culture to cause it to be okay with the darkness but hate the light amen and i'm gonna bring it down to 
the work uh, the work of the devil forces the witchcraft one the first one a is witchcraft which is a spiritual power that operates by spells and curses and this is very clearly evident in Balaam when Balaam was hired by Balak to curse Israelites so that he can defeat them in battle these guys knew spiritual world better than sometimes a lot of preachers today instead of going to battle they first hire a sorcerer and for those of us we have to understand Balaam was one of those guys that sometimes he was open to the Holy Spirit but because of his greed and because of his not having been born again he was open to the demonic spirits and he would cast spells as a sorcerer upon certain countries and then his king would go and defeat those countries and that's exactly how it happened with Israel Balak hired him and says we'll give you money if you cast some spells you can pronounce some curses and then Balaam was not let go by God and then eventually he you know maneuvered his way and decided to go and when he went there it's interesting that God didn't let him curse Israel Israel was sleeping they didn't even know there's some kind of a guy on the mountain trying to curse them Israel had problems to their throats yet when Balaam stood to curse them he says I see no iniquity in Jacob because God in the spiritual world pulled the curtain and said Balaam you're only gonna see what I show you and what I show you the righteous you can't curse them I already blessed them ah uh, this gives me a lot of comfort there can be witches wizards warlocks and witch doctors and everybody they can fast and pray and do all kinds of herbs and all kinds of smells but I can sleep like a baby because during the night God the Spirit puts a curtain over my life I might not even know it and protects you and protects me Amen. Amen. I remember I was uh, reading once a story about he came to set the captives free. Rebecca Brown discouraged every one of you from reading that book and uh, but because it's a very intense about the spiritual battle and so after I finished reading the book I read it in a setting in one setting it was three in the morning I felt I was living at the time I had my own room I was living with my parents and I felt like every witch in the world was lurking at the window of my house because your senses be, you become so aware of the spiritual world that you literally begin, begin to be afraid and so I was about 17 or 19 years of age I was really really intimidated and at the time I went to sleep and and I said Jesus you got to help me out because it's kind of embarrassing I'm a youth pastor go to my parents and ask my parents to you know to sleep with me <laughs> plus I know the Bible I know your authority and your power and but I'm scared because I read this book about spiritual warfare and at that time I remember the verse where the Bible says the Lord is my shepherd I shall not walk and I, sh I shall not want and it says that his staff it comforts me and his rod it comforts me and being young person I didn't put too much theological preferences on it I only imagined this Jesus is a shepherd and his stick is to beat the wolves so in my mind I drew a mental picture that as I'm going to sleep I see Jesus standing with the rod and any witch that will come into my room he will beat them out of my room and that's the image I planted in my mind and that's with that image I fell asleep and no it might not be theologically correct but honestly it's spiritually applicable when you sleep during the night you have to understand is that there are spiritual forces they seek to curse even right now there are spiritual forces that are surrounding to, so that our president will be assassinated there are prayers being gathered by witches to bring him down there are there are prayers that will be gathered even against your family against the pastors in our city to bring them down the spiritual people who know the spiritual world will do that but we take comfort not in the fact that we pray more or fast more but in the fact that when we rest and not even aware of who's trying to cast something on us there is a God and he covers us with his precious blood come on somebody come on you're clapping like you don't know what I'm talking about we know that God is on our side can somebody say amen? amen and this lady he was she was describing in this book how one time she was writing a book about someone that she was delivering from demons who happened to be the wife of Satan it's a whole deep story I'm not going to go into it but they used one episode where during the night these witches they decided to attack the house of a Christian 
this house that had a lot of children very wonderful family they decided to gather up the witches they came out of their bodies and they tried to go into spiritual world and come and attack the house of these Christians cause some kind of a fight some kind of a stir and as they came out of their body they got all prayed up and worked up and everything as they were going out they came to their house really late at night and lo and behold they saw a wall of giant figures surrounding them and both of these figures had swords on both ends and they surrounded the house literally like some invisible bodyguard and they tried to cast their spells on these forces on these giant figures the more spells they cast the weaker they came until they got so weak they quickly ran into their body in the spiritual world they came back to their body and the next day demons were punishing them for being defeated and this lady who was serving satan she describes she says she was explaining to demons that we can't defeat them why are you punishing us you should give us more power he says that's how demonic kingdom works one they can defeat you and number two they get punished for not defeating you yeah. why do you think demons don't want to leave people why do you think they hold on to every bit of him because that demon every demon that leaves a person will face a judgment by satan first himself because he let them go and that's one of the reasons we have to stand our ground and understand we are on the lord's side god is on our side we may not be perfect we will never be israel wasn't perfect but in the eyes of the enemy god closes the curtain and only lets the enemy see the blood of Jesus Christ and we are protected because somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah the the second part under the spiritual force of witchcraft is divination divination is pretty much similar to uh, divination is pretty much similar to that we see a girl being possessed with a spirit of divination in book of acts 16 16 and this girl she was there in the city of Philippi and the demon that came out of her in some of our bibles it says actually in original it says spirit not of divination but spirit of python spirit of python it's very interesting i read something that the spirit of python was a python serpent the greek mythology believed the python serpent guarded the oracle of delphi until apollo slew it and then took the name python the word was later applied to diviners, soothsayers, inspired by Apollo. We have to understand one thing. Everything about Greek mythology is not mythology. It's demonology. When I was younger, I just thought, like, my, my goodness, people just came up with cool names and cool stories, Zeus and lightning and everything. And then when you watch the deliverances, and we watched the deliverance, first, of, first I saw that is with Bob Larson, and I realized that actually all of them are demon names all the fights the war that's going on in the Greek mythology it's actually demonology it's actually what happens in the demon world and and those things are not naive they're not just cute ideas about the past these are demonic these people didn't worship Zeus they worship Satan they didn't worship you know these uh, Diana and so many other goddesses they, these were demons they were tormenting people's lives and it's clearly evident this girl she had a demonic spirit python who you know just it, these were the people who practiced sorcery in that day and that demonic spirit i want you to see something how witchcraft is dangerous because this girl she was not saying anything wrong what she was saying was true but it wasn't the truth what she was saying was true but it was provocative and we see that Paul was provoked in his spirit she was saying these are the servants of most high God they're here to declare the word of God that's not false that was true but this is where the trickiness about the spirit of divination and the snake is that sometimes people get it right sometimes people get people who have this kind of demonic spirit in their life they they're more likely to get dreams visions and even prophetic or some kind of a words and they sometimes get them right and if you are not a person who lives in the word of God you will get quickly fooled by that stuff and then controlled by this stuff I had this happen to me numerous of times 
at first I was very immature and I fell prey to it where somebody gave a word that totally messed up my life for that first few months completely disoriented me and then what it did is that person gained authority over my my life because now everything they say I have to rearrange my life to it and then the word of God takes the back seat and little did I knew it was divination and just because somebody puts some spiritual words behind it that doesn't mean anything when I was a little bit older similar happened again this time people had visions for me and these visions were very bad and people like that they had their visions come true all the time and those are the most dangerous when they come and they gave you a resume like everything I see happens let me tell you what I see about you it's like oh no and then they tell you everything bad and you're like oh Jesus what am I gonna do with that and if you are mature and you live by faith not by somebody's nightmares a righteous man lives by not by someone's dreams not even by your own dream. dreams prophecy words of knowledge are important they're great but we live by the word of God and so what I would do is I would take that I'll say thank you and then I would just pray about it and if I don't feel right I put the way back and some of those people that would give those words later on they would be delivered in the conferences we would have and you would be shocked what spirit would come out of them spirit of python and I'm like I'm glad I didn't rearrange my life over some kind of a word that you got in your nightmare be very careful because this stuff is especially we are a church that is open to the words of God visions and dreams and everything be very careful on who you follow on Facebook just because somebody puts a prophet before their name that doesn't make them a prophet we have our church today who is very open today on Facebook there is more prophets than users everybody is a prophet and I respect we respect the prophets I mean you see in our church we invite them the apostles and everything but not everything on Facebook and not everybody the emails and writes or calls is the one that we should follow because a lot of times the enemy will get a grip of your life and control your life you know how python kills its victims not not by venom by surrounding it and squeezing life out of them what the first thing the enemy will do he will use those kind of people to squeeze your trust in the basic truth of the Bible and you will be fishing for the latest and the greatest prophecy and you will no longer be living by this but you'll be twisted and moved by around by all kinds of doctrine and that stuff is dangerous church that's why we have to stand on what God says we welcome prophecies we welcome words of knowledge we welcome visions dreams and we sort that out we pray that through but we stand on the word of God what God says it settles it in Jesus name the third thing is sorcery sorcery so witchcraft divination and sorcery and sorcery is what works by objects charms music and drugs the new testament greek word translated sorcery is pharmakia which is a source of our english word for pharmacy in paul's day word this word was primarily meant dealing with poison or drug use and was applied to divination and spell casting because sorcerers often use drugs along with their incantation and in, in, incantations um, so what happened is that you, you see this in T.B. Joshua's church many times or in Africa where people would say native doctors or they would say um, these doctors they would people go in who would use medicine and witchcraft in combination and so and that's what happens with sorcery it's interesting that in revelations it says revelations 9 verse 21 it says that in the last days the people who practice sorcery will be destroyed the word sorcery in that word is actually drugs I genuinely believe yeah drugs you know weed has become legal in our state I want you to know this it's a legal open door to demonic I want you to read I want to read something to you from uh, Bob Larson's blog in Hinduism marijuana which is in their language called Ganga has been used to worship the demon of death and destruction for thousands of years Bob Larson said I have confronted possessed people who never practiced Eastern religions but got Shiva and other Hindu demons like Kali Jezebel by taking a joint Chinese Taoism 
has a long believed that inhaling marijuana is a way to communicate with spirits and tell fortunes. In pagan Norse Odinism, pot has been used to invoke Freya, which is another form of Jezebel, a demon that Bob says he often dealt with when ministering to those of Scandinavian descent. Pot was important to Celtic Druids when practicing witchcraft. Tantic Buddhism employs pot as well as Sikhism. In many religions of the world where witchcraft is implied, weed is involved. It's legal. Open door to demonic. I understand some of you may be here today. This is not to judge and to guilt chip anybody. It's for those of us who've been delivered to know what we got delivered from. You didn't just get delivered from smoking grass. You got delivered from the demonic oppression. That's why mark your life. See that the moment weed came in, so did the poverty. Lower grades, bad relationships, immorality and so many other things. It's not just uh, it's not just the marijuana that brought that. There was other spiritual forces that came in. One out of six people that drinks, that, that smokes weed gets introduced to heavier drugs. I've had friends that I knew that I lost them to death because of weed started with weed they convinced themselves it will never go further it went into heavier drugs and their life got destroyed first they lost their mind they lost everything they hurt everyone around them and then the enemy took their life i do believe that the chief way that satan gets into people's lives in america and especially in our city is through drugs yeah we may not be practicing white and black magic but through this stuff you may say but I don't feel demon possessed. Now Satan is a thief. A thief is only as successful as his ability to penetrate your life being anonymous. Do you think Satan will come to you after you smoke a joint and says I'm a devil I came to get you? Of course not. It will make him dumb and he's not dumb. He is crafty and he is sneaky and he is crazy and so if you, I know that some people maybe have to take you, you may say well but it's for medicine purposes get a hike for medicine purposes get some sleep for medicine purposes go to prayer line if you have such a depression that you need to smoke it out not at the expense of relieving one problem to create another problem Satan gives with one hand and with another hand he takes what your life depends on and so yes it's legal in our state but it's a legal door in a spiritual world against the principalities and forces of darkness and for those of us who got delivered from that stuff we are glad that Jesus Christ delivered us from that spirit in Jesus name can somebody say amen and if you are here today and you are addicted to that and you may say you know what after service today we're gonna we're gonna pray but afterwards you will be able to come and we'll have pastors here we will be able to minister to you minister this freedom if you want to be free Jesus will set you free if you don't want to be free Jesus will never be able to set you free because Jesus will only set you free from your enemies not your friends if you make drugs your friends he can set you free they are yours for life you know have fun and get high but if you want if you're tired of it and you say I cannot be free on my own I just need help from God God will help you church will help you in Jesus name can somebody say amen and the last thing the last shade is the witchcraft in the church witchcraft in the church Galatians chapter 3 and we're going to come to a close after read the scripture Galatians chapter 3 verse 1 2 and 3 of foolish Galatians who has bewitched you bewitched you that you should not obey the truth before whose eyes Christ Jesus was clearly portrayed among you as crucified this only thing I want to learn from you did you receive the spirit by works of the law or by hearing of faith bewitched in Greek it means an evil eye it means when there was an obscured revelation or obscured vision now of Jesus crucified it's when Satan does his best to remove from the upfront of our vision Jesus and his cross Jesus and his cross for one reason or three reasons why Satan this is called witchcraft 
where Satan wants to remove and put all self-help anything that could replace the power of the cross cross is not cute you know we have made it romantic in the 21st century you wear a little crucifix but imagine carrying electric chair on your chain it's brutal we had a chance to go see one of the places where they believe that Jesus was crucified what shocked me is when they pulled out history and they said Romans didn't crucify people on hills they crucified them on intersections on the busiest highways so that the most people can see the crucifixion and the people will be terrified to rebel against the Roman regime by looking at these victims and never ever dare to oppose Roman Empire. The fact that they put the writing over Jesus's head indicates he wasn't crucified on some distant hill as we see in the Passion of the Christ and they show us the place where most likely yes everything there in Israel is a hill but most likely it was in a place that there was a huge traffic and Jesus stood there bleeding. Isaiah says unrecognizable as a human thick scourge, the thick, uh, thick thorns were driven into his skull and nails everywhere and that wasn't romantic that wasn't cute that was shameful and that God used to crush the kingdom of darkness that God used to become the message of Christianity that's what Paul says to Greeks it's foolishness to a Jews they're saying it's nonsense but he says to us it's the power of God and no we don't see the crucifixions today and we don't have to be constantly reminded of the gruesome of that event but we're reminded of the benefit of that event the cross is the way to heaven the cross is the heaven's way to us the cross is the license for my healing the cross is the license for my joy and not only to get saved but to live a saved life as a pastor as a church member as a stay-home mom as a politician as a police officer as an unemployed person the cross is my only source of victory can somebody say amen all the benefits come through the cross. Cross is the means of Satan's total defeat. Cross is the only source for our living. Some of you heard my unfortunate story before going to Israel. I was very careful to check my wife's passport, make sure it's not expired. But of course I wouldn't check mine because mine never gets expired. Until I got to the airport and I realized that they told me I can't go to Israel. And I said, why? I have my bags already packed. I got my cameras ready. I got everything prepared. I am dressed for Israel. We got a whole team. I'm leading a team. That's what I said. I wasn't really leading a team, but I was leading a team. I am ready to go to Israel. And they said, you can't go because of one thing, because your passport is not correct. Passport. And I felt like the man in the Bible who got sent from the feast because he didn't have the wedding garments. And there in the Pasco airport, disappointed and heartbroken, I realized there are certain places you can't go without a passport. You can't go to healing without the passport of the blood. You can't go to salvation without the passport of the blood. And see, blood of Jesus is your passport to living a successful life. It's not your bachelor's degree it's not your virginity it's not the fact you went to church all your life it's not the fact your mama and your papa was christians it's not because your grandpa was a pastor maybe all of that stuff is non-existent in your family history if you got a passport called the blood of jesus christ you qualify for a successful life people will look at you and say i worked harder than you you say yes but i got a passport for a successful life they say but i went to college and you got the job because the blood of jesus christ it's not only paying for my sin it's the source for my life can somebody say amen hallelujah how many of you got a passport this morning how many of you believe you're gonna live a better life than ever ever you thought before how many of you you believe that because of the blood you will aim for what you don't deserve thank you for watching this content i hope this was a blessing to you if you're like me and you like to click on things click on this subscribe to our channel and the content will come to you 
every time we post it. And remember, the best is yet to come.